Hi everyone, we are starting today's episode in complete darkness on purpose. So first, let there be light. <laughs> we all have amazing cameras these days. We have amazing smartphones, amazing DSLRs, amazing point and shoots, amazing cameras in our watches, but they are all just tools. They do not take pictures. And we hear people say in our daily lives very often, this camera takes awesome pictures. It's the person holding that camera that takes the picture. The camera cannot decide how to use light. Only you can do it. Having said that, my hair light just went off. So I'm gonna fix that first. Hair light fixed. The purpose of this video today is to help you guys take your everyday photos with slightly better lighting. Because all you have to do is to simply pay attention and realize a few quick things. This video is not really addressed to seasoned photographers who know everything about light. It's addressed to those of you who take everyday photos with their cell phones, with their watch phones, with maybe point and shoot camera or a small DSLR camera. Maybe also to some photographers that are starting out and want to learn more about light. Both myself and my dear wife Blani have been doing this all our lives. And we can share this knowledge with you guys today to simply help you improve the daily photos and videos you take with any camera you have available. When we are on a professional assignment and I think about light and how to photograph our clients in the most flattering way, I always think about five aspects of light. And I have a shortcut in my mind that goes QD, QDT. Quality, direction, quantity, distance, temperature. If you pay attention to these five aspects of light and always make sure they are all correct or the way you want them, you're gonna be able to achieve very good results in no time. All of them are important, but the first one you should always be paying attention to is the quality of light. And here's one rule about light that you absolutely have to remember. The light is softer when the source of the light is bigger. That is exactly why photographers come up with softboxes, umbrellas, they bounce the flash off the walls and ceilings. When the source of your light is bigger, the quality of the light is better, it's softer, it's more pleasing, it looks more natural and more flattering on your subject when you photograph them or take their video. And I'm going to illustrate this right now with just the lights we have available right here on my beautiful subject, my wife Blonnie. Now take a really close look and compare the shadows on Blonnie's face in these two photos. It's easy to take beautiful photos when the light is gorgeous. If you live in California, you have all this beautiful sunlight coming at you at all times of day and it's all you need to do is just uh, aim your cell phone or your watch camera and you take beautiful photos. But what do you do when there is no light? Most of us would simply take out their smartphone or their point and shoot camera and shoot the photo with the little light that's available here that is placed right next to the lens. It does produce light, it will light your picture, but it's definitely, but it is definitely and positively the worst possible way to light somebody's face. In this photo, Blonnie's face is lit just by the little light on the phone. Her face is always beautiful, but in this photo it looks flat, the light has no definition, no direction, it's simply not very flattering. The very first thing you can do to improve this situation is you can simply take the source of light and move it away from the lens of your camera. Here's a photo lit with one of our lights but it is placed off camera, it's not direct and it already makes a huge difference. Now if we study it more closely you still see harsh shadows on Blonnie's face and that's because the source of the light is fairly small in relation to the subject. As soon as we increase the size of the source of light, the light becomes softer. Now take a really close look and compare the shadows on Blonnie's face in these two photos. In this one the shadow has very sharp edge, it is very strictly defined and even though the light is off camera, it's still far from perfect. Once we increase the size of the source of light, that already makes a huge difference. <music> But in your everyday life, you are not going to have all these lights. And there's also going to be all kinds of different scenarios. So the first thing you can do is simply pay attention where the light is coming from. That's one of the QD, QDT, five aspects of light, direction. The easiest trick you can do in any environment, whether you're indoors, outdoors, and you can't really tell where the light is coming from, like on a cloudy day, you're in a park situation or in a city situation, 
there's buildings over there there's trees the light is bouncing and you can't really figure it out it's not always easy look at this light it's amazing where is it coming from oh we it's a it. reflection in the window so the very first trick you can do is simply put your hand up turn it around and look how the light on it changes and when you're moving it like this you will see the shadows moving around and disappearing and the light filling the inside of your hand as soon as it faces the main source of light in the environment where you are so before you take your next photo whether you're visiting Grand Canyon or you're having a holiday dinner with your family do the hand trick try to position your subject so that they are facing the light and try to have the main source of light coming about 45 degrees from the front when we shoot weddings we often work in very dark environments there is maybe one source of light and I often see people running around with phones trying to shoot completely against light and then and then kind of being disappointed that the phone that they have the newest model didn't really take the photo as good as they expected and the faces are dark well basically this is why it's simply because very often we do not pay attention to where the light is coming from again even the best camera out there with the ISO sensitivity bumped up beyond 100,000 cannot take a great photo when there is no light so this covers the first Q and D that are always in my head when I think about light quality and direction direction of the light affects the quality of light because when the light is coming at the subject's face straight from the same direction as the camera's lens it's not as pretty as when the light is off camera and the quality of light is better when the source of the light is bigger as I quickly mentioned before photographers often bounce light by pointing your flash at an angle behind your shoulder or to the side you are increasing the size of the source of light the source of your light is not this little flash head on the top of your camera anymore it is now the whole wall or the corner of the room or the wall and ceiling that you bounce the light off now another important aspect is the distance here's exactly how the distance between the light and your subject's face can affect the look of the photos in this example Blani is standing right next to our two lights here and again if you look at the pattern of the shadows on her face you can see that it is pretty soft there is no harsh edges because she's standing close to the light the source of the light is big in relation to the size of her face it is big in relation to the size of the subject you are photographing that's exactly what makes the light soft and pleasing to the eye now what happens when we use exactly the same lights but we pull them far away from the subject we change nothing else except we move Blani away from the same exact lights about 40 feet which means the source of the light became much smaller in relation to the subject that is also why it's difficult to shoot flattering and great looking photos in full sunlight photographers hate it because sun is gigantic but it's so far away from us that in relation to the subjects we try to photograph it is this small this is how distance affects the quality of light the last of the two Q's and two D's is the quantity and that's simply the strength of light or how much light you have to work with if you have a lot of it you can move it far away from your subject and still have decent exposure at low sensitivities which in layman terms means cleaner photos with less grain if you have low quantity of light like candlelight or dimly lit wedding reception you can probably still take photos but they will be very grainy even with today's absolutely awesome cameras that go to crazy high ISOs that we couldn't even dream of 10 years ago with more quantity of light with stronger light you can play around you can bounce it off the walls or an umbrella or into a softbox and create beautiful soft light on your subject if you have little quantity of light available all you can do is point it at your subject's face and take the photo this covers my four basic aspects of light quality direction quantity and distance all of them affect each other and I hope I explained it clearly enough in this video if not please do ask questions post them in the comments right under this video and I will be absolutely happy to reply and engage into a discussion with you guys for today this is all from us I hope you guys enjoyed this special lighting episode Blani thank you so much for enduring the cold working in our backyard Hope you guys have a good night. We'll see you tomorrow with a more regular vlog. It's so cold. How much longer? I think we're done. Really? Yeah. That was so fast. That was your uh, roll in it.
It took you a lot longer to set this stuff up. I know, the rest I can just talk about. Are you sure you're all done? I can walk inside? I'm pretty sure. And sit in front of that heater? I'm pretty sure. Okay, bye.